In this video, I'm going to show you how you can be able to use natural language to scrape data using a tool called Firecrawl. And then we're going to take a look at how we can be able to integrate our Firecrawl into our NAN workflow and be able to use that for a actual real world use case. And lastly, if you were to stick to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a secret way that you can make money using Firecrawl. Now, if you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing to this channel for more AI and tech content like this. And with that being said, if you're interested, let's continue watching. So right away, you can be able to navigate to firecrawl.dev, which is where I'm at right now. And here is the landing page for signing up on Firecrawl. And here you can see I have already signed up. And once you sign up, this is what it looks like for the dashboard. And if you were to click on usage and you can be able to track the current free plan for the usage. And right now you can see that I have been using a lot of the extract tokens which used up about 36% of the total free trials that I have. So let's take a look at how we can be able to actually extract data, right? So we can click on playground and here you can see we have different features. So we can be able to scrape a single page. For example, if I were to scrape this website, it's going to run. Currently, you can see that it's going to scrape the data. And once the data is scraped, you can see that it's currently in a markdown format and we can be able to also convert it into JSON format. And the good thing about this is that we can be able to take the content of the website and pass it to a large language model using this feature, right? Now, this is just a scrape feature, which basically extract the content from the page. There's also additional features like crawl all the URL from the sub page of the domain, or be able to output all the website URL from a single page. Or there's also a feature to search the web and give full content from results. But I find that most practical feature that I use for Firecrawl is extract feature. So basically what it does here is that it will extract structured data from a single page or entire websites using AI, which is really cool. Because traditionally, when you try to extract information, you first have to use like, for example, single URL and be able to crawl the data first and then pass this data to a large language model to extract those information. But here you can be able to do this all in one by saying that this is the websites and, and extract those information, right? So I can try this in a extract playground. You can see that here in the extract playground, I can be able to specify the prompts. For example, from all the pages in this website, I want you to extract the company name, the mission, and whether it's open source, right? So things like that. Or I can also be able to generate the parameters manually. So basically I specify the URL and then the schema that I want to extract. And the parameters here basically tells what data we want to extract, right? So the company mission is going to be a string or text. And then is open source here is going to be Boolean, which is true or false. And we can be able to set as optional or required. We can also be able to add additional fields for any other field we want to extract. And there's also additional features like enable agents. So we can be able to specify the agents that we want to use. And there's also enable web search and such. So let's say if I were to run this and let's see what happens. And then here you can see this is the data that we get. It's open source. It's true. Company mission, turn websites into large language model read data. So we are able to extract data from websites specified here. Now, what's fun about this is that we can actually implement this in NAN as well. So let's say we have a website, we want to extract information. We can be able to take the schema that we have and convert it into a JSON view and paste it into the NAN uh, request body. So you can see here that we have the properties, we have the required fields, and then we can be able to take this as a request. And let me show you how that works. Now to use Firecrawl in our NAN workflow, we can just look at this blue section here. And here basically we can see that this is the Firecrawl, which will basically try to use the extract features to extract the URL. And we're trying to use the Firecrawl to extract the name and the email from a URL. That's the goal, right? And basically how it works is that we first try to run a extract job. So based on the Firecrawl documentation, we want to first start the extract job and this will basically run the job, but we're not going to get the data right away. We're going to wait for 30 seconds or so. And then once the job is completed, then we're going to try to get a status. By that time, the job might not be completed yet. So what we can do is while the job is still processing, then we're just going to wait 10 seconds and be able to send another request to get the results. If it's still processing, then we're just going to continue with the while loop. Okay. Now, eventually we're going to get either it's going to be failed or completed for the job. In this case, we're going to check to see if it's failed or if there's an error. If there, if there is an error, then we're just going to save the records onto Google Sheets for the error records. If not, we're just going to continue with the workflow by sending an email and saving the records onto Google Sheets. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do. If we were to come back with this part here, you can see that there's also extract error. So what it means is that if we run this job and the job is not able to run, maybe we're out of limits, we're out of credits, then we can be able to uh, save the error records that, hey, we did not run the record. We, we did not run this lead. Uh, we can be able to save this onto Google Sheets here for the error record, right? 
So basically that's how um, the workflow works, right? We can be able to use Firecrawl to extract data. We're not gonna get the data right away like some other API that we can call. So we have to, um, using this process to first trigger the job and then check the status for the job constantly in an interval, right? And once we have the data, we can then be able to use that data to continue on with the workflow. And to show you that the actual workflow is working, you can see that I have run this workflow multiple times. And basically you can see that for each of the workflow, for example, the latest workflow here, um, we are able to get the data, there's no error, and sometimes there might be error too. So if we were to look at the data here, first we try to extract data from the Google Sheets, so get lead, and first we are trying to trigger this workflow. If we were to click on the schedule trigger, we're trying to trigger this workflow in every five to seven minutes. And then we're going to try to extract a lead from Google Sheets. And then the goal here is we want to use Firecrawl to extract name and email from this URL, right? So we pass the URL to the Firecrawl. So here you can see we're using a post request and this is the URL for extract. For headers here, I basically put the, the authentication tokens for the headers. And then if we were to scroll down, you can see that this is the JSON body for the request body. And here you can see we have the URL, which is this one right here, which is the website. And then here's the prompt and also the schema, okay? And these are the properties that we want to extract. And once the extract job started, then it's going to wait for 30 seconds and then we're going to get the status. So if it's completed, then we're going to continue on, be able to send the data and be able to save it onto Google Sheets, okay? So very simple. Now, if we were to look at the Google Sheets, you can see that this is what it looks like. So you can see that we have many records here. Some of them could be error records, for example, this one where the URL is not valid. So if I were to click on this URL, you can see that the website is not working. Maybe the website is down, for example, right? So that's why we have to record those error records onto Google Sheets. This is the record. We did not send the email, but because there's an error, right? And then we also logged the error message here. Now, if we were to scroll down, there could be also different kinds of errors, right? where there could be errors like 403, where this is a Facebook page and we cannot scrape this data from Facebook. And so that's pretty much how we can be able to run Firecrawl in our NAN workflow and be able to use that in a practical use case. The other way you can use it is people to make money out of it, right? So for example, if you see Appify store, you can see that there's so many web scraping or automation projects that you can be able to create. And these are pre-built actors that people can call. For example, let's say if I were to search for Google Trends and here for this actor, you can see that it basically scrapes the Google Trends data. And here you can see the price for that is $20 per month, which means that people pay $20 for using the scrapers. So you can literally use Firecrawl to crawl this data as well. So for example, here you can see these are the list of keywords for Google Trends and I can be able to scrape this data by passing the URL and then the schema that we want to scrape. So here is going to be a list of trends, right? So for each trends, we have the keywords, the volumes, the breakdown, and when it will start to be trending. And I can be able to send this request. And here you can see we scraped 25 items and we can output this as a result. So pretty much we can be able to monetize our Firecrawl API and by without writing any code to scrape data. Now, pretty much this is it for this video. And I basically show you how you can be able to use Firecrawl and implement this in NAN. And lastly, how you can be able to monetize it using Amplify. So if you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video and consider subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I will see you in the next video.